The following program is brought to you by the University of Alabama. Phil Byler's latest book is a collection of essays on Cuba, the island called Paradise. Under the auspices of the University of Alabama Cuba Initiative, Byler made a number of visits, and the results are these discussions of Cuban literature, history, and culture, and some amazing profiles of personalities such as Che Guevara and Ernest Hemingway, Desi Arnaz and Fulgencio Batista, Graham Greene, and Martin Cruz Smith. I spoke with Phil Beidler in our studio in the Digital Media Center on the campus of the University of Alabama. Phil, it's good to see you again. It's good to see you, Dan. I don't see you often enough. We're on campus together all the time, but, yeah. but you're in your office and uh, in the classroom. We're working hard. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I sure like it. I, we go back an intolerable length of time. I, I came here in 69 and you came in 70. Four. Four. We Four. go 40 years. We've been friends. <laughs> and and we kind of took to each <laughs> other immediately. <laughs> On it goes. <laughs> As you have written at this point, I don't know, was it eight or nine books? Some Actually, I got the tenth is in press right now. Some yeah. fantastic and unwieldy number. <laughs> I've read along. I've read along. And there was, with the exception of like first books, your book on Alabama literature, with a couple of exceptions. You, like James Jones, made your pile writing about war, yeah. Vietnam War, the Second World War. But this is really a new direction. You have written a book about Cuba. Now, there's a little bit war involved, uh, Bay of Pigs kind of yeah. you know, skirmishes, but basically it's not a war book. It's a book about Cuba, history, personalities. Why did you do this? What, what turned you in this direction? Well, uh, partially, uh, the university uh, made me an offer I couldn't refuse, and, they, and that was to send me to La Habana, to Havana. And I just said, when? Uh, t yesterday, please? Uh, uh, you know, I, we have, of all things, in this fairly conservative state, in this fairly conservative region, one of the longest established relationships with the Cuban government that is the Castro communist mm -hmm. government, but specifically with the University of Havana. And uh, uh, we've been doing academic exchange programs, collaborative research mm -hmm. programs with them for about 20 years. And uh, uh, I was invited to write the narrative to a, a photo volume uh, uh, on uh, the subject of, uh, it's called Habana Vieja, it's, it's old Havana, the old city, and of the restoration of the city, uh, 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 which is, itself is kind of a miracle, it's a, it's a world historical site, but uh, uh, the city historian, uh, Dr. Eusebio Leal, is a, uh, uh, a close uh, co uh, colleague of the Castros, and he had unlimited money and old Havana, there's uh, Habana Vieja, uh, has been restored to its former glory. Only it's not disnified. I mean, it's still gritty. It's but it's <laughs> it's just and you know you just you're on the Malacom, and you expect Sir Francis Drake to come sailing into the harbor. You know, <laughs> cannons firing. But anyhow, I was invited to uh, write the narrative for a photo volume uh, involving Chip Cooper, a photographer from here, and, uh, and uh, Nestor Marti, who was a young photographer working for the city. So I basically just followed the dance of the photographers for a couple weeks and got to know mm -hmm. the city and got to know Havana. And, right. and, but then it just, it, it actually, and, and it was based uh, on uh, the pictures also that Walker Evans had taken in Havana. Uh, most people don't know about this. Before he did Let Us Now Praise Famous Men down in, in uh, the Black Belt of Alabama, he did a, a photo shoot uh, for another book about Havana. 
Uh, Hemingway picked him up as a drinking companion at the hotel. I mean, it's a great story in and of itself. But, but, but that led me to uh, return uh, uh, research, and, and, uh, and I just decided that I wanted to write a book about this remarkable place. How many times did you go? I just went twice, uh -huh. but, but in both cases, uh, the university was uh, had enough, I guess, confidence in me. They just kind of let me do my thing, and, and, and it's what I do. I, if I go someplace like that, if I go to Prague or if I go to London, I just sort of drop from sight for a couple days and walk around and, and look for interesting things to write about. And, and in Cuba, there are, there are plenty of those. Yeah. It's, of course, as a you know, professor of English, American literature, a lot of your book is about literature. It's about writing. Yeah, yeah. And you have chapters on Ernest Hemingway. You have a chapter on, on uh, 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 Havana, uh, the, have, the det uh, Martin yeah. Cruz Smith. Martin, yeah, yeah. Who, yeah. Who, Detective who, Renko. Detective yeah. Renko. And yeah. I like the, the yeah. uh, I like his books that are set in Moscow. Yeah. And Graham Greene. Yeah. And they're all different. Yeah. The Cubans love Hemingway. Yes. You made that very clear in the, yes. cha in the chapter on Hemingway and Che Guevara. Yeah. But they're not fond of Greene. Qu quickly, why do they love Hemingway and why do they not like Graham Greene, our man in Havana? Well, uh, uh, Hemingway, of course, in, in, endeared himself to the to the to the Cubans uh, by uh, uh, writing, having the good manners to write the old man in the sea, yeah. with, uh, with and, and the uh, 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 the book that he won the Nobel Prize for, and putting it in Cuba and and, and a, a Cuban uh, hero, and uh, actually his his uh, his first mate on the on the Pilar was the the model for the great. His name was Gregorio Fuentes, and he was the model for for. Uh, 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 Santiago, but uh, Gregorio Fuente spent the last thirty or so years of his life, you know, cadging drinks <laughs> out at the, you know, the marina where they they set out. But but uh, he could say, "I am Santiago." Yeah. Well, yes, he could. <laughs> and 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 uh, but but Hemingway also uh, came back to to Havana, and this, of course, was he was about to lose the Finca Vigia because, or, or he was afraid he was going to lose the Finca Vigia, his his place outside Havana because all the properties were being confiscated and the rev it was clear that the revolution was was going that way and uh, so that, and he left Cuba and I, and I think it really tore a big chunk out of him when he left but before he did uh, he actually had a very famous press conference in which he said that that he dedicated the Nobel Prize to the people of Cuba mm -hmm. so uh, the business about him hanging around with humble Cubans was Kind of bogus. He he liked to hang around with with rich people, people with titles. Uh, I, I mean, you can still, uh, he, he's, but he's everywhere in Cuba. You did, can go. You did go he to, leave the Nobel Prize there? Is it in Havana? You know, I don't know to tell you I, the truth. I, I, I had heard that he yeah. had handed it over, and it was in a museum in Havana. Yeah. Graham he, Greene just in his he made a satire set yeah. in Havana. Oh yeah, that they was didn't great. like that. No, well, they they liked. The book, okay. Uh -huh. uh, it was a and it was a it was a send up of of uh, a spy narrative in which a guy can talk. Can, it's an English guy. Yeah. It's during the Cold War, and he and he concocts this entire network of spies. Actually, there was a German agent in Portugal that did it during the Second World War, and just you know invented these peoples, invented their activities, and picked up all kinds of you know his paymasters were saying, oh man, send us more. Well, the, the guy's the, the 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 spy is is he's actually a vacuum cleaner salesman, and and he's been sending them diagrams of of, of uh, engineer drawings of vacuum cleaner spare parts, uh, and 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 it, but actually it turns out that that it's uh, in, missiles are involved, and so he was sort of predictive of the Cuban mm -hmm. missile crisis eventually, but but then they made the movie and uh, and it was an odd sort of made. Uh, 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 Burl Ives uh, w was in it. Alec Guinness was in it. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of Michael Redgrave. A lot of, but but it also was in black and white, and it made Cuba look very sort of gritty. It was like you know film noir. You know, it was this seedy kind of uh, uh, city. And they and by this time, see, he filmed under Castro. Uh, he wrote the book 
before the revolution, but shortly after the revolution, they filmed it and they brought in all those people. And, 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 and the revolution didn't like the way it depicted, hmm. you know, the, the Cuba. Moving from the ridiculous to the sublime, <laughs> you, you taught me more in this book about Desi Arnaz. <laughs> Not only more than I ever knew, but more than I imagined that oh. I was ever going to know or want to know, and I was finally impressed. Oh, he was you, a, yeah. you make him out to be a very talented, very managerial, very organized guy. I mean, it's, I, my sense of reading the chapter on Desi Arnaz, Ricky Ricardo, Ricky Ricardo. for the uninitiated, yeah. is, is that you were taken, as you researched him, you were taken with him. Oh yeah. Well, well. For starts, he was he was a Cuban aristocrat, uh, Desidiero Arnez de la Hacha, and he was from Santiago, and he was and his family was very highly placed, and he became a, just a Cuban heartthrob, and his his uh, and his his number was Babalu, yeah. uh, which which was which was the god of of, 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 of Santeria, the, the the kind of Cuban. Folk religion, and you know, yeah. it's imitation uh, voodoo. Yeah, 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 and but some Catholicism in it and all that. Uh -huh. and, and I just, uh, you know, I encourage anybody to get on YouTube, and you can, you know, you can get a video of Desi Arnaz doing Babalu, the the song, the you know, the God worship, and he is just so beautiful, and and uh, and eventually he he came to the U.S. Uh, I mean, he was in music. Uh, uh, got involved with Prez Prado and all that, and then started his own orchestra. And yeah, and he was kind of a one-minute, uh, one-man entertainment combine. Uh, uh, he uh, and then, of course, he married uh, 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 Lucille Ball. Uh, he alleged in the the canteen in Hollywood. He he said he looked at her and said, "What a honk a woman." <laughs> and, yes, and, well, we, but but uh, he, I remember bits of Babalu yeah. from. Yeah. I love Lucy. Oh, yeah, they did that, but uh, but uh, he was uh, he was not the, the the idiot, you know, the the, uh, the 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 volatile Cuban. I mean, he he he'd been had quite a career, yeah. but he was the one that actually put together, you know, the whole entertainment complex the thing. Desi Lu. Desi Lu. Although she eventually, you know, she was a very astute person, a careerist, but also a business person. And, and his problem was, was, was drinking, that, that he, he eventually became a, a, a rather hapless alcoholic. And it is interesting to think sometimes that the, the personas of Lucy and, and Ricky yeah. are both of them so, oh, yeah. sort of goofy. Oh, she was a tough cookie. But yeah. they both could have been executives with IBM oh, or, yeah. or, or, yeah. or General Motors yeah. if, they, if they had taken yeah. a different route. They were both highly organized. Yeah. What, what I, Serious what I, people. Uh, what, I, what I also liked about doing that chapter was uh, uh, the Mambo Kings play Songs of mm -hmm. Love, which mm -hmm. is a wonderful movie, which is about Cuban musicians in New York. Yeah. Uh, uh, they did a scene in which the two new Cuban guys uh, are invited to the Ricardo house and they splice together the film so they do a bit with, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's kind of a zelig like thing. But, but in that movie, Desi Arnaz, Desi Arnaz, is depicted probably as the kind of person he was. He, he went to their show and picked them up, took them to his house, they ate breakfast, and, and he was just a generous, spirited person like right. that. But he was also a very good businessman, and if he took you under his wing, the chances were you're gonna make it. Odd things that I learned from your book Things, you know. I mean, one knows odd things about the, the, uh, the, a few things about the Bay of Pigs or yeah. about the CIA and trying to kill Castro. A lot of these things are kind of in the in the lore. I did not know that the exiled dictator Batista <laughs> had set up residence in Florida and started an art museum. Correct. What? What? He, is he somebody people? I mean, he was a monster. Yes. 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 And in Florida. He became a kind of culture art hero. He was exiled, uh, although he was still de facto president. And he decided oh. he, that he would take his exile in Florida, and he had his eyes set on Palm Beach. And 
Palm Beach did not want him. <laughs> he was he was not considered sufficiently <laughs> of, of adequate background. He he actually was the subject of bigotry all through his life because he was he was uh, uh, mestizo. He was he was he was too Indian. I mean, even when he was the dictator for life, he couldn't get into the Havana Yacht Club. You know, they made fun of him because he because he he wasn't. That sounds very dangerous. Yeah, you know, he wasn't Spanish, you know. He wasn't Hispanic enough, and uh, but the, he, the, the 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 social lions of Palm Beach suggested that he would not be welcome there, and so he and Marta just did a Jimmy Buffett, you know, started up A one A up the Florida coast, and he got to Daytona, and Daytona said, "Oh hell yes, you know, you can come here," and he bought a big place and. And uh, he was a good, he, I think he, he wasn't a Rota Rotarian, I think he was a Civitan, but he just sort of marked time there while, while he was going to make his return. Which he did. Which he did. <laughs> yeah. But he flew in like C-47s worth of, of looted stuff, and, and including this incredible Cuban art collection, which he gave to the city of Daytona Beach. And, and it, is, it is now there. It's still there. It is there in the Volusia County Museum of History and Science, <laughs> and it's right across from the Daytona 500 racetrack, and but it, it's exquisite. And uh, I, I think I called the chapter "Good Neighbor Batista." Yeah. Before he le before he and Marta left in '56, they had a President Batista Day. I mean, they had a parade in Daytona, and they rode in a convertible, you know, mm -hmm. honoring him as their chief citizen before well, he went back to Cuba. That's so. tasteless, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> but they kept the they kept the art museum. Well, Mar and Marta eventually moved south from from uh, 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 Daytona down toward Miami. But I'm sorry to say, she she never did make it to Palm Beach. So yeah. <laughs> the the heroes in your book, I mean, there's a series of, well, major figures anyway. I don't know if Desi, Desi Arnaz is not a hero, a hero yeah. but Che yeah. is a hero. Oh, yeah. And there's a, in our youth, Che Guevara posters were oh, yeah. <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Are they still? Oh, is, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And he is, is, his face is everywhere. He's the face of the revolution. Uh, there's an interesting ideological reason behind that. You, you will either see Che, or often uh, you still see on walls. I mean, it's it's wonderful the the murals and things like that. But you will see often you will see Che, uh, Fidel, and a man named Camilo Cienfuegos, and they were sort of the three musketeers of the revolution. Mm -hmm. And Cienfuegos died in an in in an air crash very shortly after, in the early 60s. And there's a suggestion that he was getting too big a rival and that it was engineered. But, uh, but, yeah, but you know, eventually Che went off, you know, and to foment revolution everywhere. But the reason that you see so much Che, and, and, and you, you never see really any Fidel, is because uh, he was a Marxist enough to, to, that he wanted to dispel what they call the cult of personality. That, that, that you're not supposed to have posters of Mao. You're not supposed to have mm -hmm. posters of Stalin because that means they're not being good communists because they're calling attention to themselves and, and not as workers' heroes. So that's part of it. But, but it's just because the other reason he's just damn glamorous. You know? And dead. And dead. So therefore he right. can and be, safe. He can be right. glamorized right. and but lionized. That, but that picture, that particular picture of him, the one that's so famous, was uh, uh, you find out apropos of nothing where all this happened. There was a French munition ship in the harbor in Havana Bay called the Coubre, and it was probably sabotaged by the CIA or, or some kind of anti-revolution. An enormous explosion of an ammunition ship and, and a lot of Cubans in Havana. And that picture of Che is while he is walking away from the de disaster and just gesticulating, you know, we are going to, you know, we're going to win against these yeah. people, so. And he could be lionized because he finally was killed. Yeah. He died. All right. And Fidel apparently isn't, hasn't, and <laughs> refuses to, won't. And Raul. And there is no time for this question, but I'm going to ask it just because I, I'd, I'd like people to be thinking about it. The chapter that you have 
on on uh, Autumn of the Patriarch mm -hmm. and Fidel. Yeah. The, what I took from that was that strangely, Fidel's Castro's lingering, lingering illness yeah. and refusal to be mortal somehow is the literary equivalent of what had been a fictional depiction yeah. of the tyrant in yeah. in the Marquez. Yeah, and Marquez was a great friend of Fidel's. So he never meant to mock Fidel Castro. No. No, History but did it. Yeah, well, it's like <laughs> it's a curious reciprocity of art and life, you know, yeah. that, 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 that fictions recapitulate themselves in fact sometimes. What's interesting yeah. is that, that, that the fictional depiction that really comes close to him at the beginning is Woody Allen's Bananas. Oh, yes. I mean, you know, Fid Fidel Castro is so lucky. He's, I mean, he was completely feckless. I mean, his, his attack on the Moncada barracks was just stupid. I mean, they had no chance. And then, and then you know, Batista lets him go as a gesture. He goes to Mexico, rounds up this scurvy crew of about 85 people, and they come back on this cabin cruiser called the Grandma. And, and within about six hours of landing, I mean, they barely get across the Caribbean. Within six hours of landing, they're, they're almost all shot dead. They're about seven, you know, they're captured by the Batista troops. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Fidel, uh, Che, uh, Raul, and, and uh, several other people make it into the hills. I mean, he, he really was pretty feckless. Uh, and, and, you know, he, he, and he was arrested. For a while, he was in prison. Oh yeah, for a yeah, while. he was in prison at the Isle of Pines. And the lesson for dictators like Batista is that when you arrest people like Fidel Castro, you should not let them out. No, no, nor let them <laughs> speak, because he made this famous speech: "History yep. will absolve me," you know, and he became kind of a martyr. Yeah, this is not in the realm of your book. This is in the realm of of uh, prognostication. But you've been to Cuba, and you've spoken with a lot of Cubans. You have your co several colleagues of yours from here uh, make the trip back and forth to Cuba, Chip and others. Right. What What do you see as the? I mean, this is a two minute history. What do you see as the next two years, five years? Are Are things going to change? Are they going to yeah. go on like they are forever? Yeah. No, everything's going to change when the old men die. I mean, things are changing right now, uh, and the, the Cuban people are patient. And they're also, I mean, they've suffered so much. And, they, mm -hmm. and they're, I mean, you know, they, 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 you talked about the Arcadi Renko book. I mean. Uh, the special uh, period. The special, the periodo especial, especial Crazy. Which, which means people didn't have squat. I mean, and, and to this day, I mean, you, you go to a store, like if, because and, and, you want a peanut butter sandwich, and it turns out they don't have peanut butter this week. They got cheese. And if you, don't, if you don't want cheese, you know, you're up the creek, right? But uh, uh, the Cuban people are patiently waiting this out. They know things are going to get better. Uh, uh, they're, they are just such good people. And, and uh, it's going to be up to our government to, to stop being jerks about this mm -hmm. and, and, and to realize that there's this, there's, there's this wonderful place and this wonderful people 70 miles out in the Florida Straits that, that really just want to be part of this region with us and us with them again. It's, it's real simple. Seems like it should be time. It should be time. And, and uh, you know, it's, it, whether we're going to knuckle into the uh, under to the, to the, to the right-wing cuckoo birds or not, I mean, right. and, and, and the, the Miami Cubans, you know, they had every right to be angry. I mean, there were a lot of people that were, that were jailed, that had relatives executed. I mean, there are two, two sides, of three sides, five sides to every story. And, and, and you can understand people who came here in the, in the 60s and lived the American dream and, you know, so. Phil, we have one minute, mm. actually. Ah, okay. <laughs> and I understand that you've completed one book and are working on yet another. So give them 30 seconds each. Well, uh, the, the one in press is called Beautiful War, and Studies in a Dreadful Fascination. And it's basically about why people make art out of war. Ah. Uh, uh, and people write books about war. People write symphonies about war. Uh, uh, the, the one I'm working on right now is called The Great Beyond, and, and, the, and the subtitle is uh, uh, this, the, the, the Strange Afterlives of Artists and Their Creations. And it's, it's about artists that speak to me across a century from 1910 
but they're Mark Twain, Gustav Mahler, Virginia Woolf, uh, uh, Franz Kafka, uh, uh, Pucci I'm writing a chapter on Puccini. Why? Uh, uh, because they, they are all sort of proto-modernists who came just before the terrible century and sort of could see it uh -huh. beginning, see it happening, but they've been passed down to us in ways that have been affected by subsequent events, and that's, that's why I'm interested in how we reinvent these, 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 these figures. So this so. is the generation before the lost generation, Correct. the generation before the Correct. Faulkner, Hemingway, Eliot, Correct. Pound, and so on. Correct. Call it my old man book. And I, I suspect you've had to do some arduous research in Prague and Vienna and London. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it, Don. Well, <laughs> I, I, you have my deepest sympathy. <laughs> well, I'll let you go get back to work. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Don. As always, it's a pleasure. Oh, it's a great pleasure for me, too. Thank you.